Today we're reminded of a dogma of our faith, two dogmas, and one of them is that, remember man, that thou art dust, and that we come from dust. This is a dogma of our faith. It's an infallible and an inerrant truth that 6,000 years ago, on the sixth day of creation, God made a special creation of man. He did not create man like the other creatures. All other creatures were made immediately out of nothing. But God chose that there be a special creation of man. And 113 years ago, 114 years ago, the biblical mission of, of, the, of the Catholic Church said in the reign of St. Pius X that all Catholics, in order to be Catholic, must believe in this dogma of faith that Adam was specially created by God, and Eve was immediately specially created from the side of Adam. Remember, man, that thou art dust. That's where we came from. We are dust. We are not monkeys. We are not from other creation. We were created out of the limus terre, out of the humus of the earth. God took the slime of the earth, and he took and he breathed into it the spirit of man, and he made our body the body of Adam. And this is an infallible truth. There is no other human source for our generation of our bodies than the body of Adam. Hence it said, literally and infallibly, when Jesus Christ said, I am your father, and I am your mother. And the fathers tell us, this statement can only be made by two men on the planet Earth. One of them is the one who made all of us. And that is our Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son, in His divinity. He is our Father and our Mother. And the other is our physical Father and Mother, which is Adam. We came from His side. Eve was taken from the side of Adam. Her entire body came from Him. And his body came from the slime of the earth, and this is a dogma of the faith. There was a great theologian, a good theologian, a German theologian in the 1800s, who wrote a theological manual in 1883 in Latin. And he said, it is indeed hard to believe how foolish these modern souls are who believe that man could have come from generation from every kind of animal. For if this was true, the Bible should be ten times longer than it is. For it says in the sacred scripture that God breathed the spirit of man, and he made the body and soul of man immediately from dust. Now if, he was, if it was true that, he, that his body evolved from millions of uh, different intermediary creatures, the Bible should be a very long book. And it should say, and God breathed the spirit into the dust, and then from the dust it became an amoeba, of amoeba it became a bunch of fish, and from the fish it became, it became reptiles, <clears throat> reptiles eventually became uh, animals, uh, mammals, and then monkeys, <coughs> and then all the different intermediaries until we arrived at man, and finally, after millions of years, then God <coughs> breathed the spirit into a monkey called man. And this is a blasphemy, it is a lie, it is impossible, it is against <coughs> the doctrine of our faith, and it is a metaphysical, philosophical, historical impossibility. Remember, man, that thou art dust. God, <coughs> 6,000 years ago, breathed into the dust. Adam. Adam is a special creation of God. And the sacred scripture that the Middle Commission said, we must believe in the book of Genesis that God specially created man, and whoever does not do so, whoever does not believe this, commits a mortal sin against the faith. A mortal sin against the faith. <coughs> and that he will not be able to save his soul. It is a dogma of our faith. God alone knows how we came into being. St. Thomas Aquinas says, how can we know when the rocks came, how can we know when the sun came? 
We know that they are here now, and we know they're created by God. But the only way in which we can know how they came is if God tells us. It is a matter of divine revelation. And when Eve was taken from the side of Adam, Adam was sleeping at the time. When he woke up, there was a girl. And how did he know that she came from his side? Because God told him that she came from his side. It was a divine revelation by which God said to, to Adam, this woman <coughs> whom you call Eve, which means a uh, woman, which means taken from the side of man, whom you call Eve, which means the mother of all the living, she is taken from your side by my special creation while you were taking a nap. Adam was not even a witness of Eve's creation. He was sleeping at the time. He only knew about her coming from his side because God told him by a special divine revelation that this woman came from his side. And all life, all human life, will come from her. So that every human being that has ever been born is a descendant of Adam and Eve. All races come from Adam and Eve. And Adam, Eve, comes from Adam, and Adam comes from the slime of the earth. And every Ash Wednesday you remember, remember, man, that thou art dust. These are not nice statements. They are dogmas of faith, infallible truths that are absolutely certain. We are more certain of this than we are of any natural thing. Why? Because God told me. That he made my great-grandfather and your great-grandfather from the slime of the earth. From the limo terre, from the humus, from which we get the word humility. He made God, my God made man from the slime of the earth. He is from dust. Remember, man, that thou art dust. And unto dust thou shalt return. Now the second part of this dogma is that we are going to return to dust. Now why is this? Because of the sin of Adam. We came from dust because of the special creation of God, which makes man a beautiful and unique creature of all God's creation. We return to dust because of the great sin of pride committed by our great-great-grandfather when he decided to eat the forbidden fruit. And hence in that little statement, the short statement of the priest says, when he puts the ashes upon your forehead, and those that are clerics and in the and, and, and religious state, their ashes are poured upon the top of the head, the crown of the head. So we pour the ashes on top of the head, because he is more dust, more dust, poured on the top of the head, and the crown of the head. Remember, man, that thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return. We came from dust. And unto dust we are going to return. We came from dust because of the special creation of God by which he decided to recreate man in his own image and likeness. God created man in his own image and likeness. And in order to do this, he decided he must make him out of dust. He must make sure that every part of the universe is represented inside of man. Angels have only spiritual parts, and rocks have only material parts. Animals have a kind of a mix, but they are made directly by God. But human beings have all the aspects of the universe that God made inside of them. And hence, remember that thou art dust, but unto dust thou shalt return. And why do we return unto dust? Because Adam committed the original sin, which is passed on to every human being. There is a total of two, two human beings who never were touched by original sin. And the one of them is our Lord Jesus Christ, who is true man, never for one moment touched by original sin. And the other is his holy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, who was conceived immaculate, and she was never touched by original sin. Hence, if there was a giving of ashes of, to the Blessed Virgin Mary, she could receive the first part. Remember, man, that thou art dust, for she and he, like us, in their humanity, come from dust. But they need not return to dust. Hence, God also in this little statement, Remember, man, that thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return. We remember also a third dogma, infallible truth of our faith. There were two human beings, Adam, and our Lord Jesus Christ in his humanity, and the Blessed Virgin Mary and her humanity, all human, that they never were touched by original sin, 
They were never touched by actual sin, and therefore these two humans never go to dust. All the other humans come from dust and return to dust. But Jesus Christ did not know corruption. He was three days in the grave. He died at 3 p.m. on Good Friday, and his body remained perfectly incorrupt, without the slightest drop of corruption between 3 p.m. on Good Friday when he died and when he rose from the dead on Easter Sunday morning. The Blessed Virgin Mary, she died in order to imitate her son, but she did not have to die. Immediately, her body was taken without any drop of corruption, straight up into heaven, because she had not the original sin. And therefore, remember, man, that thou art dust, applies also to Jesus Christ, applies also to the Blessed Virgin Mary. But unto dust thou shalt return does not reply to them. And this little statement that we repeat every single Ash Wednesday reminds us of many infallible truths of our holy faith which apply to all men on earth, and not only Catholics. Every Hindu, every Muslim, every Jew, every atheist, every Protestant, every single human being on earth, whether he knows it or not, whether he believes it or not, he came from dust. He did not pass through the intermediary of false and foolish evolution. There was no evolution. God decided to take the slime of the earth, and he poured it into it, the body, the perfect body of Adam, by a very special creation. And then from Eve, when Adam was taking a nap, and God said to Adam, it is not good for man to, to, the, to the Father and the Holy Ghost, said to each other, the, the three persons said to each other, it is not good for man to be alone. And therefore, from the side of Adam, he created Eve. The most dignified flesh that ever God created is the woman. She comes from the side of man. And man comes from the slime of the earth. And this is a most beautiful, profound, and infinitely true truth. It is real and true. And then, remember, our faith is not a compilation of nice ideas. It is the story of man, the story of the world. It is real history and infinitely, fallible, infinitely infallible and inerrant truth. The modern man hates God. And the devil hates God. And therefore, one of the great lies he tells man is that he came from all kinds of violent and evil chance processes. And that, he, and that he came from a monkey, from a beast. He did not come from a beast. He came from the special work of God and the most special creation. And remember, man, that thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return. We are reminded of the judgment. Now, after we have returned to judgment, returned to dust, what's going to happen? The story is not finished. Every human being that does go to dust and experiences decay, this decay shall only be temporary. And this applies also to the damned in hell, not only to the just in heaven. Every single human body that has ever lived and ever been conceived, including those that are aborted, those who were miscarried, and those that were born with any kind of defect, Every single one of these bodies shall be restored to its perfect state, which will be at the age of 33, with an absolute perfect health and a perfect configuration of their bodies and their true bodies as it was given to them by God at the moment of creation of that soul into that body. At whatever time that human being was conceived, this body and every body shall be brought together in absolute perfection and shall return from dust back to absolute perfection. And they shall meet with all other bodies in the valley of Josephat on the day of judgment. And those that are damned shall with perfect bodies be on the left side of Christ. And their perfect bodies being perfect, they will be able to suffer perfectly and completely in the fires of hell. And those that are perfect upon the right side, they shall be able to rejoice perfectly and completely in the joys of heaven, body and soul. And hence by this simple statement, Remember, man, that thou art dust, and unto dust thou shalt return, that we say on every single Ash Wednesday. We are reminded of the great perennial truths of the history of mankind. Man was created by a special creation immediately by God on the sixth day of creation from the slime of the earth and not from any intermediary species through any process. Eve was created by God when he took a nap and fell asleep from the, side of, from the side of Adam. 
And Adam only knows that Eve came from his side because God told him so. And he knows it's infallibly true because God speaks only the truth. And he cannot take anything that is false. Therefore Adam knows, and Eve also knows, that they were created specially by God, and that they are the father and mother of all human beings of all races. We are related cousins one to another, every man, woman, and child upon the planet Earth. We are all descended from Adam, and also all descended from Eve. And every single human being must die and return to dust, except for our Lord Jesus Christ, who could not know corruption because he did not have any original sin or actual sin inside of his human body. And the Blessed Virgin Mary, who could not know corruption because she had no original sin or actual sin in her body. She was conceived immaculate. And hence she was taken straight up into heaven right away after her death. Our Lord Jesus Christ waited the third day before he decided to rise from the dead. And all the human beings shall know corruption. And at the end of their corruption, they shall be risen by God. When the trumpet blows at the very end of the world by the angels sent by God, and all the dead shall rise, and their bodies shall reunite with their souls at the valley of Josephat in Israel. And this is fact. This is history, and no one shall escape it. Let us decide to be upon the right side of our Lord Jesus Christ, and not upon his left when that day comes. This is our only choice. Let's believe every word that proceeded from sacred scripture and the infallible teaching of our Holy Mother of the Church and the fathers of the Church and the wise teaching of the Biblical Commission 113 years ago when it said that no Catholic can call himself Catholic and be free of mortal sin who does not believe in the special creation of Adam being made by God from the slime of the earth and by, on, uh, at the direct creation of God and by no evolutionary or any other process. Bless you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.